of mine. City Kai Mary, how can I help you? Okay, I am in a conference right now because I'm not hearing you. I don't know who is calling me. Let's continue with our teaching on the Lord's Prayer. Now we are going to, we've done the labors from all evil. Okay, dear Jesus, we ask you to, to be among us during this conference call. We ask for your blessings. As your people come to be fed, Share with them your victory and your power. You are a mighty God and the great I am. We bless you, we thank you, we give glory to your name. Let every way be silent because you have appeared. We will listen to you and listen to what you say. We will obey your instructions. And we will give glory to your name. Amen. Look at what it says. For thine is the kingdom. Okay, that's number one. For thine also is the power, that's number two, and thine also is the glory, number three, forever, and then amen. Okay, let's begin. What are we looking at here? You see, to God the Father and to God the Son belongs... I don't know whether people who are watching on Justin TV are seeing me clearly. Are there people watching on Justin TV? Are you guys seeing me very clearly? Because it looks dark a little bit. see here we discover something about the king we discover something about heaven you see when you read the bible try and ask yourself what what is the meaning of what i'm reading how does it apply to me how do i use it to prosper and to be successful Is this just a story of what happened to other people? Or can I profit from this? 
Can I profit from this? How do you profit? You profit from this. When you begin to apply it to everyday living, number one, I belong to a kingdom. I have a king. I am a subject of a ruler. A first class ruler. I am a son of the Most High God. When Abraham was coming back from the wars of the king, you see, if God is behind you, you cannot fail. The only thing that I want you to know is that in the kingdom of God, some things are fast. Other things come slowly. Other things crawl. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. From the point of view of the kingdom, there are things you ask God. It's instant. In fact, even before you ask it, it's done. At other times, it takes a day or two or three. At other times, it takes a week, a month, sometimes a year. Sometimes three, four, five years. Why? I have no idea. And no human being in the face of the planet, no matter how involved he is with God or she is with God, can change that principle of the kingdom. Nobody. This is where people lie to a lot of you out there. That when one day pray for you, there will be an instant miracle. I never promise anybody instant miracle. What I promise people is that their problem will be solved. And that is why I avoid giving you time. There is one, one bad prophet that is in America today. In fact, there are many of them. They will even give you time and date of when something is to happen. And 99.5% of that doesn't come to pass. It does not. It's a fraud. And God takes those kind of things very, very seriously. When people begin to make mistakes in those areas, in order to prove themselves to be what they are not, God takes it very, very seriously. Don't give people false hope. Because the kingdom is not about giving people false hope. The kingdom is about doing or saying what the king asks you to do for people. And then you leave it for him. The power does not reside with us. It resides with him. We are only exercising a power, authority and force that belong to Jesus. That is his. That's what we are operating on. And there are times that I am possessed by the spirit of Jesus. And then I begin to tell you that exactly a week from now, exactly a month from now, in two days, and some of the things I'll tell you in two days, and it begins to happen in one day. I told one guy in Alabama, I said, somebody is coming to meet with you and will make you an offer to go with him and start a contract somewhere to go and work. I gave him two days. It happened in once that same day. That means it is what the Spirit of God has seen through me. I am simply an agent of God. But many of you would rather want to be fooled. I have decided that I'm not going to play a prank on anybody using the Bible. I'm not going to be because I need money so desperately that I'm going to be sending you emails or sending you letters in the mails upon letters in the mails telling you specific things that are not true. I know of people in America who send you emails every day 
about conferences that you have to pay money, about prophecies that you have to pay money. Because they know that people are desperate for these things. And desperate people do desperate things. You will go and even borrow money to pay a prophet. Let me tell you something. You see, this 2014, judgment has begun in the area of prophecy and prophetic ministries. The Almighty God, mark my word that I'm saying this afternoon, the Almighty God is going to weed out of his kingdom everyone who are prophesying out of their spirit and manifesting out of Baal and Leviathan in ministry or in church. He's going to weed them. You see, when the concept of the kingdom is introduced, for thine is the kingdom. It means there is a kingdom that belongs to our God. Kingdom means a planet. Let's now define it. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, that's the real thing here. The kingdom of heaven is a planet. It's a place, a physical place. The moon is a physical place. People have been landing there. Space is a physical place. People live there right now. So why do you doubt those them? Mars, Venus, Jupiter, all those places are all physical places. But in a different sense altogether. That tells you that spiritual things are also very physical. You look at the moon and say, ah, look at the moon. God put it hanging. Jesus said those moon hanging up in the sky. But they are not just hanging. It's a different universe of his own. And people have gone to the moon many times, so that should tell you something. They landed and walked on it. And there, people can people can levitate in the air. They are weightless. So that tells you, that tells you the kind of atmosphere. That tells you that it is not just a physical place, but also is a lighter a like place for people who, um, it means that you need a different glorified body to be in those places but it's still physical so today if you tell somebody that the moon is a real physical place they can't doubt you because people have been there they've worked on it so when we talk about the things of the spirit it's not something that is that you should doubt Why? Because it's physical also. The kingdom of God is like that. It's a physical place, but in a different sense. We belong to a kingdom. The concept of a kingdom introduced with it. Riches, honor, wealth, prosperity. In any way you can think of it, whether in God, whether in acquiring God, or anything, you have it. Anything you wish for is given to you in the kingdom. There's nothing like, oh, we'll try and get it tomorrow. One of the most important things where I'm very careful about it, where I do ministry, is that people are constantly on the move. Whether you are doing ministry through technology like I'm doing, or you are doing ministry, you have a, a, a building where people come, it's very important for you to know this. People are constantly on the move. I am aware that people, even those who follow my ministry, are still shopping for prayers, they are shopping for Somebody can pray for them, an immediate miracle happen. 
I am a welder. But the concept of the kingdom introduced a lot of stuff. The kingdom primarily belongs to God. And God alone is the decider of how your prayers is to be answered. There is a place that he allows you to participate in the negotiation. But the final decision is by him. And most of the time, he wants you to make a change first. Any of people who cannot give a dime to my ministry, but they have thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, to fly to go to other countries to go and meet a man of God. And they go there and they meet him and he prays for them. That's all they, they wanted. They go there, he lay on them, and they come back and they become worse. And that's when they start looking for me. And sometimes that makes me begin to think, should I put a price tag on what I'm doing before I do things for people? Because what I'm teaching you, you go there, they don't teach you. They lay hand, they pray for you. And what happened? You come back, you feel that bubble, you feel that good at that atmosphere. When you walk away from that atmosphere, you're done. What I'm trying to do is to lay a strong foundation for you so that nothing can carry you away. So that you learn how to deal with your issues first. The kingdom mandates us to deal with ourselves first. Because let me tell you something. There are still a lot of people who are stuck in their old ways. We need God to solve our problems. But behind the closed door, where there is nobody who is watching us, we are very sneaky. We are still doing things that is making our life and prayer not to be worth anything. So you want God, you want the kingdom, but what are you doing behind the closed door? What are you doing when nobody is there? What is your husband doing where he is? during his business trip. And what are you doing when he's not there? Think about that. Because this thing has been brought to me many times by a lot of people. There's a lot of family thing, marriage thing that is playing out right now. That's not how the kingdom operates. And yet we want God to help us. We want God to bless us. We want to be part of the kingdom lifestyle. And yet we enjoy these sneaky games we are playing. There are some people because their husband has cheated or their husband has neglected them or their wife has cheated or their wife has neglected them and they too, they want to go and cheat. If your husband is a cheater and you decide that you are going to cheat, it means that naturally you are a cheater. Because there is no way you are showing an example that you are better than him. I'm simply, I'm simply putting this the way it is. You see, ah, oh, it's because of what he did to me, so I have the right to do it. It shows that you are a deceiver and a cheater. Because if somebody did you wrong, you are not to go and do wrong because he has done wrong. If you go and do wrong because the person has done wrong, it shows that you are a very, very sinful person, naturally. Someone talked to me once about, about his wife. A young man in his 30s talked to me about his wife or oh, he felt like she has cheated on him it, it, immediately the holy spirit said to me because of that you went and you slept with another woman he said how do you know that i said because you have the spirit of vengeance and the spirit of revenge is in you that's who you are as a natural person you are a vengeful and revengeful person it doesn't take much to make you react that's what i told him 
doesn't take you much. And you're already out doing your own thing. That's what we call the spirit of rebelliousness and stubbornness. How do you prove to somebody that you're better than them? That's what the kingdom is all about. Because somebody is saying words against you, cursing you out, then you start lashing back at the person instead of entering your car and driving and walking away. And then you won't. You will stay there until a fight breaks out. Somebody is not agreeing with you on to spin something. Instead of simply walking away and ending the relationship, you continued because you love a fight. It shows you are somebody that loves a fight. You love drama. That's who you are naturally. I know people whom when things happen, they all cry and very emotional. They are sorry. They did it because of this and that and that. And after a while they say, oh, I, will just, I just have to put up that shield for him. I say, really? say, oh yes. I don't believe this. You should be looking for how our job on earth is to discover how the kingdom operate so that we can be like that. We can operate like the kingdom operate. Doesn't mean that people are talking trash on you. You should go back and begin to talk trash on them. Get away. Yesterday, somebody told me, somebody wrote to me on Justin TV. Somebody wrote this. Listen to this. He said, why do you disable your chat, the chat on Justin TV? You know, when you go to Justin TV, you cannot chat. You can't do chat. You can't send me a message on a chat. The reason was, when that chat was there, I didn't even know that there was a chat there until somebody pointed, Andrew all the way from Malaysia pointed out to me that people are cursing out Calling people the N word, the B word, uh, the H word, all kind of stuff on the chat. On the chat. So while I'm teaching, people are busy doing that. People were looking for girlfriend, boyfriends on the chat on my Justin TV. And I just went quietly and I disabled it. And somebody wrote to me yesterday it's, I think it's an Indian guy because it's a long name it's an Indian guy he wrote to me that uh, that why is it that I disable it that I don't want people to comment he said all kind of nasty things I just I just uh, uh, deleted it and I went to Justin TV and blocked him And I reported him quietly. You don't need to respond back to a lot of things that you see or hear. Because if you do, you have given them an opportunity to exercise their energy. Do not give people opportunity to exercise their wicked energy. Do not. The kingdom is a call for you to emulate Jesus, emulate the Father, emulate the Holy Spirit, how they do things. This earth is an extension of the kingdom. The earth is an extension of the kingdom. This is an extension of the kingdom. Always tell God the Father, Lord, I believe the kingdom is yours and mine, and I thank you for it. Let your kingdom that belongs to you forever and ever, amen, let it come in its fullness in my life and in the atmosphere around me. And let there be calmness. Let the blessings be activated for me. Thank you, O oh Father.
that you have made me to become part of the kingdom, your kingdom. Already, you hear Jesus talking about the kingdom at the beginning. He said, thy kingdom come. Because until the presence of God shows up, which is the presence of the kingdom, the will of God will never be done on the earth. If you want God's will to be done on earth in your life, what you've been praying for, begin to live the way the kingdom people live. A practice of those you don't need, those who are not profiting you anything, those who are causing you injury, let them go. Be willing to let things die. I can assure you something. Let me share something with you. There are people whom they will begin to pursue. Everybody will pursue a woman. Oh, they will put all their interest to pursue that person. You see, for some people, relationship is a competition. Oh, I'm marrying a doctor. Oh, I'm marrying a dentist. Oh, I'm marrying a pastor. Oh, I'm marrying a bishop. Oh, I'm marrying this. People are not marrying the person. They are marrying the title or the job of that person. They are marrying a politician. They are marrying an architect. They are marrying this. No. So suppose that person is no longer an architect or a banker anymore. What do you do? We are talking about how the kingdom operates. And wherever you have the kingdom lifestyle, let's see what Jesus, uh, Paul wrote about the kingdom. He said, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the classical definition of the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Do you have right living? The right lifestyle? Have you received the ability to turn away from evil? Have you received the power of God that delivers you from evil? So that what you say and what you do comes out right. That's righteousness. Peace. Do you walk away from trouble? Do you spend a long time to look at things before you trust people with it? Or before you jump into it. Do you, when people come into your life, do they come with an atmosphere of peace? Or are there people when they are, when they are in your presence or you are with them, you begin to panic? Like our sister shared with us yesterday. Whenever the, the daughter is in the house, she panics. Because she, she doesn't know when, when this lady is going to lash out on everybody. That's what we mean. Are you living with somebody that you don't trust? Like last night we spoke in relationship. While you are still dating, if there is something in you that does not trust somebody, walk away. Because they, they, are, they possibly are some sneaky things going on that you are not aware of. There are some deception and manipulation. Always ask God to reveal deceptions and manipulation. Because a lot of people, a lot of Christians are very manipulative and very deceptive. It is their way of life. It is, it is how they live. They are enjoying it. They're enjoying it. They don't want God to stop them from enjoying it. And you are wasting your time trying to pray for those kind of people. Last night I was on a lady. And I told her strictly to have faith that she's a lazy woman. Strictly. If you have your citizenship in the United States. 
can't you live comfortably in here? And this is the message I want to pass to all of you women, young or elderly or middle-aged women. If you come from a different country and you've been living in America or Canada or Europe for quite some time, I'm begging you in God's name, don't go back to your country to go and marry a man. Or don't go back to your country to go and choose a husband. I'm begging you, don't do it. Because 99.5% of the choice you are going to make there will not work out. Ask God to find you people. You are already used to the mentality of Western life. You need somebody within the Western world to marry. You don't need people back in Africa. You don't need people back in, 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 in Asia. You don't need people back in India. You don't Because we think when we go and bring those people from their tiny little hearts, from where they live in the forest, in the bushes, from where they live in their little cities, that we are the one who they will obey us. We are looking for, a lot of men are looking for women that can obey them. Women that they can deceive and manipulate. That's why they go back to do it. A lot of women are looking for men that they can manipulate and deceive. I know of a, a lady that spent much of her lifetime prostituting in Italy. She was a high class prostitute in Italy. And through the prostitution, she was able to see a man, able to hook up with the man who brought her to America. And then she abandoned the man and married another man all the way from Nigeria. She brought another man all the way from Nigeria to come and marry. That man cannot say a word in her face. That man can never say the way he feels about anything. She does anything, goes anywhere, sleep with anybody. This man cannot say a word. Why? Because it is the lady that went there and married him and brought him here and gave him his green card. Let him try getting away. And this lady has gone and made very bad voodoo for him. In case he want to get away, he will die. And the lady told me that. She said, if he ever tries to get away from her, he's going to die. And I believe it. Because he made, she made him swear that he will never get away. And he didn't know what he was entering into. <sighs> With the kingdom of God, see, he says, righteousness, peace. Do you have peace? Are you a peaceful person? You see, when once I finish with what I'm doing, ministering to people, talking to people, on a ministry level, I like to get away. I like to just get away. Are you a lover of peace? If all the time you always want people around you, then you have a problem. If all the time you want the television always on, then you have a problem. If all the time you always want noise around you, then you have a problem. You are not a peaceful person. There are some days that I live across the street go out to the lake down in front of me and just put a blanket there, carry a little picnic, this thing, and my, and my reading device, my reading device, and turn on the Bible, and I'll be reading. I said to the fish, here I come. And I just sit there quietly all by myself, watching nature and just enjoying life. I don't need another person to come and sit with me and to tell me comedy and fun things to make me really feel appreciated and love. No, I don't need it. There's a place for that. And if you are constantly wanting people around you, then you are either sick in the head or sick in the mind or you have a problem that you do not want to solve. The kingdom means righteousness, it means peace. Righteousness, right living, right action, right thinking, right imagination. <laughs> the 
is that all the meaning of of righteousness? And then peace. Ability to have calmness inside you and around you. You all saw last night there was so much wind. I knew why. Whenever there is that battle prayer, whenever I do it each year, there will be a mighty wind. And last night it was disturbing so much, I shouted at it during the program. I said, be quiet. I don't need you. Go back where you come from. I think three hours or whatever hour. After that, everything calm. This morning broke with nice atmosphere. I have known sometimes you don't say anything. It continues. Then the snow comes. Then the rain comes. Then it begins to blow down trees. Kill you people. No. Tell the destroyer to go back. The kingdom is joy in the Holy Spirit. Are you a happy person? Do you have something inside you that is an internal joy? Do you? An inside joy. And then the concept of power is introduced. The kingdom is about power. The kingdom is about power. Very important to me. That's the most important word in the world for me, is power. I'm going to talk about power and glory tomorrow. Make sure you have righteousness and you can tap into the righteousness of Christ to become righteous. You can tap into the peace of Jesus. There is a place where you can fight and there's a place where you walk away. There's a place for noise and there's a place for calmness. Balance is very important in the kingdom. Joy. Are you happy inside? Are people you associate with happy people? People who have an inner oil that bubbles up out of them as joy. Joy is the most important thing you need. We'll go there later. But we will stop here. So tomorrow we will talk about power and glory. So today you've learned a lesson that there is only one kingdom that really matters. The rest does not matter. I want you all to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Maybe God has been speaking to you about something. I don't know what God has been talking to you about. But if God has been talking to you about anything, this is the time to lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to pray.
after this um, after this prayer i will be um, i'll be having um, um i want let, let me share something with each of you so that you will be able to understand how this thing because many of you are wondering when is it the right time to get in touch with me because there are some of you that want to call as early as in the morning so let me make this very clear the most important time for you to get a hold of me Somebody tell somebody to stop what they are doing, to mute, to mute the phone. Join me at Top Leaders Institute. Bye-bye.